Kia ora whanau, nā mihi nui ki a tātou katoa. Uh, welcome to Evening Prayer as we continue our journey through Matthew's Gospel. It's been a bit of a strange week. Uh, we thought we were prepared for Monday's announcement, but the reality of being in lockdown for a while longer has kind of sunk in, and the energy that we'd put into coping well with this is sort of uh, flatlined a bit. Yeah. Um, so if you found this week especially hard, or kind of felt flat yourself, or lacking in motivation, you're not alone. Um, from the people we've canvassed, it's a pretty normal response. So please be especially kind to yourself if that's how you're feeling, and do reach out if you need to. Of course, uh, some of you will be quite stoked about having some more enforced slowing down time. Uh, and so those of us who are struggling, we're pleased for you, but uh, just don't want to hear too much more about it. Thank you very much. That would be appreciated. <laughs> If this is your first time joining us for Evening Prayer, then you can access other online content such as our Sunday services and podcasts through our website, which is simples.org.nz, or via our St. Paul's Arts and Media YouTube channel. So this evening we're going to offer a form of prayer that uses a bit of a framework. Um, part of that will include some reflection on scripture, and the words for some of the interactive prayers will come up on the screen. Your bits are in bold and you can either pray them out loud with us or in the silence of your hearts. So as we begin, you might like to light a candle. We're going to light a candle. You can just watch us lighting a candle if you want to, that's <laughs> fine. talk and light a candle. Um, to remind you of the light of Christ, which is never overcome by the darkness. Ete whanau, may the light of Christ be with you. And also with you. So let's take a moment to be silent and wait on God to slow down, to still our hearts and our minds, and invite God's presence to be with us as we reflect on this day. I'm going to lead us through a time of prayer with some space uh, for silence throughout. So let us be at peace within ourselves. Let us accept that we are profoundly loved and need never be afraid. Let us be filled with the presence of the great compassion towards ourselves and towards all living beings. Let us live in ways that others are not deprived of air, food, water, shelter, or the chance to live. Let's pray that we ourselves cease to be a cause of suffering to one another. And let us pray for the establishment of peace in our hearts and peace here on earth. Amen. Amen. It's important that we regularly create some space to reflect and to say sorry to God and probably each other for anything that we've said or done, or not said or not done that we needed to. So we're going to have a short time of silence now, and let's remember our need for God's help and healing and forgiveness. We repent of the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. O oh God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being, all that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you, to the very secret of our hearts, and all that rises to travel us. Let's pray these words together. Living flame, burn into us. 
cleansing wind blow through us, fountain of water well up within us, that we may love and, and praise in deed and in truth. And just know afresh tonight that God forgives you, forgive others, and forgive yourself. Through Christ, God has put away our sin. Let's approach our God in peace. Amen. Amen. Our passage of scripture tonight comes from Matthew 7, verses 7 to 12. It says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a wetter? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. So I felt really conflicted this week reflecting on this passage. And so while I can quite often be heard around our house telling people in my household to keep on looking instead of just giving up, as a parent I actually don't want my kids to keep on asking, especially for things that are wants and not needs and where they've already received an answer. So while persistence is all good, uh, after the third no, or whatever it is that my answer was, it um, transitions in my mind to badgering or being annoying if you're asking the same question with no new information, and that is something that we discourage in our household. Rachel, where is the crunchy peanut butter? <laughs> Keep on looking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so on the other hand, Jokes aside, in terms of child development, we know that it's really important for kids to feel that they are able to ask and knock and seek. That when we were young, we had parents or adults in our lives who were responsive to us and that the door opened often enough that we didn't get the message that there is something wrong with needing and wanting things. Because young children who no longer ask questions or ask for things are children who have actually shut down something essential inside themselves either through deprivation or emotional unavailability, even if that wasn't what was intended by their caregivers. So continuing to ask is actually a sign of confidence in the relationship, confidence in the big person or people in your life and their desire and ability to meet your needs and be responsive to you. So what is going on in this passage? I Honestly, I've, I'm wrestling with it. Because even in something that seems as straightforward as asking and receiving, we have the mystery of God and prayer and all the questions that go with that. Even the most persistent, persistent of us realise that we don't get all our perceived needs met and certainly not all of our wants. So how do we make sense of Jesus' assurance that everyone who asks receives and that the Father gives good gifts to those who ask him? And then some of us struggle to ask, to seek, to knock. Maybe we feel uh, selfish. Maybe we weren't responded well to as we grow up. Um, or we've been disappointed and shut down our needs and hopes. So I guess I'm wondering what would it take for us to risk asking God for what we need and also for what we want, the good gifts that he has for us. I think in all of this, the relationship is really important. And maybe it's just simply the going to God with all of it, not having to sort it out before we can ask, not having to justify it, but actually just going as a child, asking God for things with the confidence in your heavenly Father who loves you. And then the confidence that together you will sort out what's behind the wants and needs, that together you'll work through the disappointments, both the ones that you understand and the ones that you don't yet. That's as far as I've really got with that. Thanks, Rach. I encourage you to keep kind of wrestling and thinking that through. But we have one question for you to reflect on tonight. Uh, is there anything that's getting in the way of you being able to bring your needs and your wants to God tonight? We want you to uh, encourage you to invite the Spirit 
to highlight anything so that you can kind of talk about that with your kind and generous Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Surprising God, you come into our lives in ways we do not expect. We ask for success. And you teach us acceptance. We ask to be loved. You ask us to love. We ask for ease. You challenge us. We ask for a triumphant Messiah. You come as one obedient to death. We glorify the winner. You glorify the loser who died on a criminal's cross. Lead us on our journey from who we are to who you want us to be so that patience is built into us, kindness is assumed in us, gentleness is part of us, compassion flows from us, truth is second nature to us and the commitment to love is part of us. Amen. Amen. So thanks for joining us this evening and we hope that you can join us for online church this Sunday at 10am on St Paul's uh, on the YouTube channel and uh, evening prayer will be back next Tuesday night after the long weekend every weekend feels long at the moment same time <laughs> same channel let's close with a, a final prayer of blessing so may the cross carry you forward through whatever pain and suffering assails you. May you go forward with courage and the faith of Christ and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love at this time. Amen. Take care. Praise God from whom Blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above you, heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.